the other one is that is in mature phase, such as in mature images that we have not physically yet. It's short of not for an equal man to get the general immunity. Uh, so, German immunity was said uh, this year. Uh, uh, the academic rights generally share all the end of the end of the But it was a minor effect, right? To be the end of the end. The general ceremony. Marhaban Dick Mahana, please have the best of the question. Okay, it's uh, I should speak in, in English, I think, or in Arabic. Okay. Uh, thanks to to giving me this opportunity and this uh, honor to announce the Algerian Paper of the Year Award uh, and in the category of uh, physical and mathematical science. This year's winner is, as determined by the jury, uh, is uh, in fact are uh, Salim Ebarak uh, Azam and Larbi Bouamana from the Applied Optics Lab at uh, the Institute of Optics and Precision Mechanics at Farhat Abbas University, Setif. For a paper entitled Two Beams, Two Orthogonal Views, Particle Detection, along with two co-authors, which are, uh, uh, who are uh, Saim Simon from the Central School in Lyon, and uh, W. Ostend from Stuttgart University. This paper has been published by the Journal of Optics in 2015, which is the Journal of the Institute of Physics. So that's the uh, the our the the, 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 the the laureates for this year, and I'm very proud to announce this result in front of all this uh, the Algerian community and all the, the, the people invited for that uh, great, opportunity, great occasion. Let me say more, uh, if, you, if I may. So optics is the science of light and its propagation. From high from high school, we know. That we usually associate optics with these uh, devices made of uh, lenses and uh, mirrors, but actually, much more than that, as you, some of you may know, uh, optics is linear optics, it's, uh, it's uh, sorry, non linear optics, it's quantum optics, it's lasers, it's holography, which is the subject of this uh, paper. So it's much more than lens, as you can see. It has a father, in fact, a great grandfather, who is uh, Abu Hassan. Ibn al Haytham al Basri, uh, who 1000 years ago has written this famous book, Al Manadir, and who has been honored and uh, have been celebrating through the celebration of the International Year of Light 2015. It has also a modern father that you may know, some of you at least, he's a Scottish guy. Uh, he is indeed James Clerk, Clerk Maxwell, who has, by his own by himself, basically, build up the electromagnetism uh, on which is, is the, uh, which is the base of, of, of optics. What is optics? If I may have a few minutes, I don't know how much time I have. I have asked you some before I say, you just take your time and discuss the things the way you see it fit. So I'm going to talk a few other things before going back to the, to the paper. What is optics? Uh, actually, optics is not uh, the study of light per se. Light has one basic property, which is uh, uh, that it is moving on, on straight, on straight, a straight path, and that's not uh, much uh, to go about. This is a bit of, uh, light per se is a subject of what we call quantum electrodynamics, which is a quantum extension of electromagnetism. Uh, optics is really what's happened to light when it is contrary in its path and goes through various media. Then you see new uh, uh, phenomena, new properties appears, and new applications. And uh, that's uh, what is model optics really. Now, as far as the subject of the paper, uh, it has to do, technically speaking, I would say first of all what it is in technical terms, it, is, it has to be recording three dimensional positions of particles holographically 
using the simple and different French image. Holography. Holography is a great new science. Some of you may have heard about it. Most of you, I think, are scientists, perhaps. It is a new kind of photography. You find of doing photography. Usually, in photography, you detect or you record an image like a sign, like the lens is giving you. Here in holography, you detect a light field. A light field, you encode uh, as, uh, which is encoded as an interf interf interference pattern, and which enables you, of course, to get three dimensional pictures of objects. We can see objects, especially from various directions, as it is in front of you, reconstruct the object. It's not just a simple two dimensional image of a thing. So it's a great development in modern physics, obviously. So what has uh, precisely our colleagues have done? Uh, they have uh, uh, used a light laser beam, which is split and shed on an object. This object is uh, particles, so it's particles. And uh, from two orthogonal directions, uh, in addition to direct beam, and they have uh, recorded the, uh, the, the data of this object time-wise. Uh, <clears throat> what they have uh, achieved, uh, they have improved on several things. First of all, from a previous work, uh, the bulkiness, first of all, they have uh, devised, their device is set up in, it was set up some 60 to 70 centimeter, while the equivalent ones need some four meters. They have also developed the full mathematical expression for this, uh, for the for their experiments, and they have also uh, which allows the technique also allows for a high a high quality for production. So all this might have uh, some great impact in uh, some applications, in particular in measuring accurately moving particles in the flow. So congratulations to our colleagues for this achievement, which honor the Algerian scientific community. Furthermore, if I may, depends on what time I have, depends what uh, some of you to tell me, I would like to uh, expand on two subjects related to lights, which are quite relevant to the time we are at, the time we are. So do we have some few more minutes, uh, Sama? Absolutely, go ahead. Okay, excellent. So two subjects related to lights. The first one is related to Ramadan, in fact. Ramadan, that's uh, this month, this sacred month that we are, which is closing in on us, certainly. And that's, which, as you know, is related to the observation of the crescent moon. Uh, now, as you know, for a long time, it has been related to the observation, the earliest observation of the crescent moon by naked eye, naked eye observation. Yet, uh, the astronomers have been for a long time telling the people on sitting on committees, uh, recent committees and for para, that actually we could go beyond the naked eyes because, uh, because uh, if you look at uh, um, like the lunettes, absolutely, like a ref refracting telescope, it's just two extra lens in addition to the natural lens, which is our eye, our eye is just a, a very adaptive. Uh, a lens which through uh, muscles can be uh, stretched and change the focal length and so it, we can see so if you just add two extra lens which is the, the, what is really what is the refracting telescope is what's wrong with it and uh, actually the the vision the lens the glass that we use for vision is just one extra lens so if you don't allow for that why allowing for people to look at the crescent using their glasses Nonsense, obviously. So they have been convinced in the, since the 70s and the 80s, people have allowed, the FUPA have allowed using devices, optical devices, uh, to uh, look at the thing, look at the crescent moon, except that Algeria has not done that, by the way. Algeria has not uh, followed the people in the Khalij and so on and so forth, which have made this fatwa of extending the vision using. Uh, using this uh, the optical devices. Uh, and now the problem is, is harder now because uh, uh, it is, as you may have heard, the development of this camera CCD has done the things 
much more difficult or much more interesting, it depends on the point of view you are adopting. The camera CCTV cameras can allow you to see crescent, new crescent, uh, if, uh, very close from conjunction. In fact, at the conjunction time, in fact, even during daytime. So it's a, it's a game changing thing. And the question is, of course, is it allowed to use CCTV camera to watch the moon, the new crescent? Which uh, is the indication of the new moon, the fasting moon. So there is some uh, quite controversy about it. And uh, that's related to the direct because what is the uh, uh, CCD camera is doing? It's just taking a few batch of photons and you're enhancing it or you're stacking it. Of course, you need a lot of them. And you're enhancing it electronically, electronically and then you get a picture. Is the picture of the moon? Is the ghostly picture you get? Or is it something else uh, that's a fake and one? Certainly, it is a moon, but it can be uh, considered to be uh, like the moon that we see directly by the eyes. That's the whole problem. And so you can see that there's a lot of matter of, uh, of HDL in that. Especially that we are very uh, slow and very inert in our world, especially the Fopara, to change their mind. So if it's so, if really the CCD camera uh, watching, observing, is going to be considered as an extension of the uh, telescope, which is an extension of the naked eye, you might have a problem because certainly uh, now, since we can see uh, the moon, the new moon during daytime, we don't even have the time to, to wait for the moment, and we can see it even at some conjunction time by not adopting just the simple rule of conjunction. Conjunction that is a time where the Istifaf, Baina, the Ajram, the Talata, the Shamsul Amar. So if you can do it, why not adopting the conjunction rule and just saying that, well, the Ramadan is when the new moon is born, and, and that's all. You just, just hold up the whole things about the night observation, all this Sunda of watching uh, uh, that we have been doing for centuries due to this new development. So it's a, it's, it's a tricky because it's not, it's not, it's going much farther than the telescope.
The farther the star is from us, the older the light. Star, uh, light is coming from galaxies, far away, far away galaxies, is as old as a few billions of years. But really, the oldest light that we can think of is the light from the Big Bang, or almost the Big Bang. A few years after the Big Bang happened, what we say, what we say, what we call the, the decoupling of matter and light, three minutes after the Big Bang, as I say. And this light is what constitutes the cosmic microwave background, the CMP, which is all around us, which is surrounding us. The funny thing is about the oldest light, which has an uh, age which is something like 13.8 billion years, is all around us because this background has been moving around, coming from all the directions since that time, and it is everywhere. And it is what <coughs> has been discovered in 1965, which got people who discovered that the Nobel Prize. So everywhere you are, there is this light, this old light which is around you, uh, which is in the microwave uh, domain, it's not in the visible domain or optical one. So you think about it, the oldest light is around us and it is, its age is 13.8 billion years. This is what the genius of man has been able to achieve in the past few decades, finding that we are surrounded like the oldest light, uh, the light from the Big Bang, the, 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 the echo from the Big Bang, and like the sounds, I'm sorry for you, but the sounds cannot go beyond a few, few seconds. So that's some insight that I wanted to share with you, all the people who are listening to me. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for your